Ventura is going to join us momentarily. And so we'll get started here. Melissa is going to help and Brianna will also help fill in the gaps here. We're circling back from the last time that we all met with respect to the progress of the turnaround plan. When we last met, we had designed a process that sought input feedback from additional stakeholder groups. That process was successfully completed by Great Schools Partnership. And the result of that was a report that they issued to us. And we've had the opportunity to review that. And today we wanna to share with you the findings and recommendations of that report. So in a moment, Melissa is going to share her screen and she has captured that in some slides and then we can discuss next steps. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. If you hear the beautiful sounds of kids behind me, I'm at the uh, LFA and it's been a great morning here. So that might be a bright spot. Um, I hope you all have this deck that was sent out last night by Maria. Um, so, great. As Cynthia said, uh, we engaged stakeholders through the Great Schools Partnership. Um, this supplemented engagement that actually occurred in the spring or really February and March of 2020, which was um, right before, during kind of COVID. And so it supplements that, which was 71 folks who participated in that one, which included principals, alumni from LPS, nonprofit organizations, private big business sector, community college leaders, city council, school committee, and state uh, delegates. So that was kind of another session that was a year prior to this one, roughly. The timing of this engagement was September of 2021, again, facilitated by Great Schools Partnership in conjunction with DESE. And in this one, we did, uh, Great Schools Partnership did interviews and focus groups with 75 folks, which um, they opted in to participate in this, and that was families, students, and educators. There's four key strategies in the turnaround plan. And so that was how the feedback was organized for us. Um, and we tried to, there's a deeper report that was also sent last night, but this just summarized the, the highlights. And you can kind of see here for this, the column in the center that has a color is a stakeholder reaction, which is what we're calling it. Um, and I'll go through each of these as each one of these slides is sort of oriented or organized in the same way. So in terms of one of the key areas of, or themes for time, data, and expectations, or strategy one, was Acceleration Academies. This is very supported and um, appreciated by all of the, sh the stakeholders um, who participated. NWEA and DataWise, those are partnerships around building data inquiry cycles, and those were neutral. People didn't feel strongly or either way. Um, and so we have a suggested edit that we'd like you to consider, which is just to add some language around a district-wide communication plan to make more clear what that's doing for us. The next one is the earned autonomy framework. Most people were unfamiliar with this, uh, which isn't too surprising because it's been rolling out um, and the next phase of work is starting on that. We just heard about that in an LAE board meeting, um, maybe two meetings ago. Um, and so there's a bigger piece that we're gonna, we recommend articulating in the plan as an edit around developing and communicating the implementation plan that would include include communication strategies, how to gather data um, and how to launch it. And then the last, what we're calling, which is that purple box, additional commentary is item, are items that came up that weren't necessarily part of the focus group, group questions, but came up from the stakeholders. In this case, they were emphasizing the importance of pairing high quality materials with high quality instructional practice, wanting to be sure there's cohesion and practice. And so the suggestion we have is to articulate that the district will provide additional supports around those two areas, really as relates to, it's tied to the SQR feedback around instruction and pedagogy. I'll pause for questions on this slide if there are any. Okay. Are there any in the chat? I'm not monitoring it. Okay. For the next section, which is people and partners, again, a strategy in the turnaround plan, it was really affirming to see the support our stakeholders had around some of our big efforts around DEI and anti-racism efforts. 
uh, increased diversity of our educator workforce, the investment in social emotional supports and our, our expansion of our co-teaching model. Um, we had support in other areas, but with a little added commentary, those are the blue boxes. Um, there's a lot of support for the paraprofessional to teacher pathway programs, but they also said we want to be sure that our paras are aware of these opportunities. Um, and for our next step, we still have, we want to add specific language into the plan around increasing the number of bilingual bicultural educators. I can tell you that we already have had a session with Regis College um, for our paras this year on November 2nd. So we're starting that already. Um, um, can someone tell what what is the deal with Regis right now? Do they still have a physical presence in the city? I can answer that. Yeah, for sure. They do, Jess. In addition, what they're trying to support with this goal is to do a hybrid model for our Paris, some mm -hmm. in person, some virtual, being sensitive to families who need to pick up their children, feed their fam, you know, feed their families and also go to school and also manage their life. But they do have a campus right here. But this model, the specific one that Melissa and we are going to be engaging in is it's been designed specific to meet the needs of our working professionals. Great. I, I do have a question also related to that because <clears throat> right now they are situated in the Hero Camp and the Lawrence campus of uh, Northern Essex Community College, although this year they're fully remote. Um, my question is, have these work started and do you have already identified paraprofessionals that are gonna be part of this work? And then a third question is, what is your goal each year for this opportunity? Yep, for sure. So I met with Tony, the president of Regis College two weeks ago to really cement and continue to strengthen this partnership. She is highly committed to ensuring that we meet this goal. As a result, she is opening it up to as many paraprofessionals who are willing to take this opportunity. We did an informational session also two weeks ago of which 30 staff members participated and showed interest. I think the smallest cohort that we will do this um, spring coming up is gonna be 10, but we could have up to 30 paras who are very interested in this. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, Tony and her team are uh, ready to go with us. Mm -hmm. And the initial launch, the initial launch doesn't have a cap and we do not have a cap right now. We will take as many and we're aggressively advertising so that we get as many as possible. And, and how is going to be the tuition? Is that something that they, there's going to be a reasonable tuition for them? Do, do students have to take on student loans? Is the school district going to help with that? Yep, we're paying for that. We have a grant that was part of the commitment that we also made a very high priority where we're going to be paying for it right now. Okay, thank you. That's awesome. And I, this is just, it's probably not directly relevant to this, but I just feel like one of the things that struck me, there were a lot of things at the last LAE meeting. I don't, stop me if I'm not allowed to talk about this. But the comment that somebody made that like LPS is not doing anything to help paras become teachers was like so far from my experience of reality that I just was like, I, you know, I, as you know, I'm very sympathetic to the cause of getting paras paid better. Like we all want that. And I do, that's like a huge priority. We need to work on that. But it, I'm just like, it doesn't help the cause when you then say these things that aren't true and like are counter to what is actually going on in the system. So what is there a way, like how, how are these opportunities being communicated and marketed, you know, throughout the, the teaching force so that, that paras are really aware of them and, you know, and then nobody will feel like they have a leg to stand on in coming forward and saying something like that. Cause I know that's been a huge priority of ours. Like, yeah, for sure. So the first thing we do is we send out a very mass email in the all user listserv. That 
is geared to all staff. We do that layer first because there's teachers who work with their paras who have significant interest in seeing their paras grow professionally. We also then send it directly to principals so they can identify and tap and um, encourage paras they also have a good eye for in terms of encouraging them. And then we send it directly to the paras, including the union president to let her know of these great opportunities. Melissa can also speak to the fact that she has worked on personally a menu of professional development just for paraprofessionals. In fact, the last one that we offered was just this month on November the 2nd, the day that we closed down for election. It's a professional development day for the entire districts and Parrot had their own menu of options that they could take to elevate again their schools. There's many, many, many offerings and you're absolutely right, Jess. It is not true that we do not pay attention to them. Right, so I just wonder whether you know, we need to think about this at the, on the on the HR level. Like, mm -hmm. is there, you know, I think emails, and especially if we're sending emails out like multiple times and to multiple different constituents, and then, re, but reinforcing that at whatever in person meetings we have, and you know, with individual schools, and maybe even I don't know if HR staff have the time for things like this, but. Are there HR staff who have the ability within their time to do like active recruiting, like to call up the principal at such and such a school and say, hey, I want to talk to you about all these things that are available for paras. Can you like think of, you know, like I'll like email them ahead of time, you know, think about ones that might be appropriate and then call them to talk through it so that it's almost like a little bit more of a, a proactive talent cultivation or talent recruitment thing. I don't know if that's feasible. I'm just tossing ideas out. You know? yeah. yeah, great idea. What we've learned is that the best recruiters are principals right now. The okay. best recruiters in every single building is, I speak to you just as the principal of Sunnyside Elementary and you go to Melissa and you're like, Melissa, an amazing opportunity. You are ready. I've seen you grow. I've seen your talent. You've got this. And that yeah. gets them ready to go. That is the best recruiter right now. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And thank you for not making me the principal of Dark Side Elementary. <laughs> so. yep. Excellent. Um, so moving to the next one, there was also support um, and then some additional commentary around this um, stabilization teams and the student support initiatives. Uh, the call there was for additional counselors, which when we went and reread the pieces in the plan, we thought were pretty articulated that we are moving to increase uh, counselors in the, in the school. So we did not recommend an addition because we thought it was already represented. The last was an, another item with a, just additional commentary outside of kind of the questions in the focus group, which was uh, multiple stakeholders calling for a better understanding of the root cause for teacher retention. Um, one of the things that we are going to add that was in process and we did this year uh, was that we're going to make sure that we expand our mentoring program, not just to cover the first year, but also to pay to cover it for two years um, as a, a retention tool. Um, and I think that's our suggestion at this point. Can I just say, just because I like to sometimes throw ideas out into the stratosphere and maybe one day in the far future they'll bear fruit, but it would be really cool if we had a mayor who was interested in doing some kind of housing initiative for teachers, right? Because it, like getting teachers access to down payment assistance and, you know, the ability to like invest and stay locally, um, you know, it's not, it's not anything to do with say school culture or a million other things that might affect a teacher's decision, but, but those are big life decisions that people make, you know, and there are communities that do do that with teachers and, and kind of invest in that approach. Yep. So Jess, you, you, you're going to be very happy about this because on under the Rivera administration, he did implement that. And in fact, we do have a program that is geared to LPS 
staff members to be able to find and purchase housing in the city of Lawrence. I personally know two people in this building who are recipients of that program under um, that administration. I, I believe it is still in effect, but I can absolutely check in with you, but we do have that and people have used it as an incentive to, to buy property here. And the program is very specific to LPS, sorry, to city employees, I should say, city employees. Okay, yep. all right. Yeah, I think it's worth, you know, mentioning to Brian as something that, you know, needs should be continued and expanded on. So, yeah. All right, cool. Okay, anything else on this slide? Great, thanks for the questions and comments. Uh, the next one for the third strategy on support and engagement. Again, we see some nice areas of support for elements of the plan, both in the area of restorative practice and the expansion of our Lawrence Family Institute for Student Success uh, and Family Engagement Fellowship Program. So that was affirming. Um, and then we had another additional commentary kind of outside of that scope of, of questions, but the stake many stakeholders were asking to really deepen kind of uh, and continue our work with community based organizations to leverage the resources that are out there for students and families. Um, and we just gave kind of a list of some of the ways we do already um, connect with our community based organizations. So those you can kind of read through them here there's several in terms of uh, both early college and then systems for families. Uh, but it's still a very big piece of our plan. There's a specific piece related to the portrait of a graduate draft. That will also, that's a nice program that's coming to some conclusion that we will have more community engagement on specifically. Okay. Any questions here? Uh, the last one on autonomy and accountability more areas of support. Um, in general, there was a, um, the theme of moving towards increased autonomy was supported. Um, there's also support for the redesign of the Lawrence High School in the portrait of a graduate. We did add in there some language because when we went and reread it, it didn't really have um, the, like that we were finalizing it June, 2022, which is the goal. So we added that, we were suggesting we add that language. And then the early college and dual enroll enrollment programming is also very supported. And we had some language we could add to the uh, plan around kind of some numbers of how that's increasing. The additional commentary piece here, uh, there was a raised concern that autonomy sometimes could cause, or they're wondering if they, that could possibly cause inequities across different schools and emphasize the need for consistent and high quality education for students across the district. Um, and the suggestion we have there is that as part of our development of this earned autonomy framework, we want to be explicit in the communication and links to equity. And so we would give some explicit narrative to that as part of our implementation. Um, I just, I do have to let you guys know, just because I see that the chat's disabled. Um, before this meeting got scheduled, I had committed to a group of community day middle school students that me and my real estate director would talk with them about solar panels and sustainable housing options. And so I am going to have to duck out of this at 1130 for about 15 minutes or so. My, my RE director is going to handle most of it, but I, I want to just give the time to the students that I promised at least a little bit. So I'm going to come out and then back in. Thanks for letting us know. No problem. Okay. Um, the last deck is really just additional, or last page is additional commentary that came out that we thought deserved kind of its own page. So this is beyond those four key strategies. And one was, um, and we felt like it was more, it, it was outside of the scope of our adding to this plan on this piece, but just stakeholders wanting clarity in the proposed plan about the path for LPS out of receivership. So that came in those focus group as an item that they wanted to understand better. So we wanted to relay that to this team. Um, and then in addition, the stakeholders who participated, those 75 folks wanted to feel heard in decision-making and implementation of this plan um, and increase transparency about how their feedback is being used. And so we would just suggest an email that summarizes the edits that came about based on their input. And that's a very easy thing to do to validate their participation. I would just say here, I want to push back on, on the other comment on this slide in the sense that I think it's like 
uh, perfectly valid within the scope of this plan to kind of articulate, like it's part of the turnaround, right? Supposedly that when LPS is turned around, that there, you know, there would be no more, a receivership could end and we could return to local control. And so I would push pretty strongly for at least a goal in here that says that, you know, the LAE is, you know, or I don't, I don't know how to phrase it exactly, but that we want to be able to work with DESI to clarify the benchmarks for like some set of benchmarks that help us understand how we're moving towards, you know, meeting the goals of being turned around and what needs to happen in order for the system to exit receivership. So I don't think that's, you know, um, inappropriate for the turnaround plan to have. Um, I don't know how my fellow committee members feel, but I, I do think this is something that we, we need to push DESI in, on multiple fronts more strongly around. I, I feel similarly to you. My, it's not even a concern, but it's like my observation is that as we move forward to this, what is the ultimate, like, are we meeting the ultimate goal? And what is the ultimate goal? For me, the ultimate goal is that the school um, is a robot school district with uh, all the necessary resources. So then they don't need to have a, a receivership because they can be on their own. But what is, what are the steps to get there? It doesn't seem to me, it seems to me right now it's, it's separate from the turnaround plan because it's not describing a turnaround plan that after you check these boxes, you will be eligible or you know whatever the word that needs to be used to be back uh, on city control. I don't know if it's here actually, to be honest either, but, it, but it certainly I think that we need to have that clear understanding of, of what it is. So then we can aim towards that. Yeah, Jess, Naomi, uh, <clears throat> I completely agree. Um, you know, I, I think, and I'm making some, you know, sort of jumps here. And by the way, I, I was like off camera, I'm trying to like eat a little bit <laughs> between meetings too. So sorry about that. Um, nice. So I think like, you know, this plan has uh, like goals, right? Like that we're supposed to be working towards and meeting and, and um, it feels like in the, in this plan, it's like we have the strategies to meet those goals and we're assessing progress towards meeting those goals and, and all of that. And that feels to be like what's most clear to me in terms of like the role of the LAE uh, in helping the district achieve goals that would ultimately get it to a place where it's like the goals are met, you know what I mean, of the turnaround. What, what I don't know, no, I mean, picking up on your point is if that process that I just described needs to be more clearly stated by DESI, you know what I mean? Like just to say like the target here is meeting the annual goals that are in this plan and that sort of step one to looking at potential exit decisions or whatever that is it feels like that's the part that people are asking for that's missing that feels like it's not the purpose of this plan to to like mm -hmm. totally answer that question but the plan is related right because if we meet the yeah. goals that are in the plan mm -hmm. then it should like what does that mean then you know if exactly Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's the part that, again, I don't know where or how, that is the question I think that I'm hearing um, that, you know, again, got to figure out where is the best way to get that response, but that's the response that I feel like is missing. And, and I feel that if everybody has a clear understanding of what are the metrics and what the goals are in order for us to not be in the receivership, we will have more collaborative work with other people in the community, but sometimes it feels like a conspiracy theory where right, nobody right. knows what is happening and people are hiding agenda and it's the reality is that we do not know either. So this is something that, <clears throat> again, I don't know if the place to, uh, to have that is in this document, but we certainly need to have that document that will be shared across the city so then we can have more input and people will join us to meet those yeah. goals. And again, sorry, I, I think, and this is my hypothesis, we got to test this. I think it's, you know, the plan has measurable annual goals. Like there, there are goals in that plan that, you know, we're working 
and when I say we, the board, but the district are working to, to achieve. So I think we could do a better job of elevating what those goals are so people know what they are, what we're working towards, you know, sort of progress towards. The piece that I think is missing and that we can't say, but, you know, I think we're asking Desi is, our assumption is that meeting those goals, like, is a part of the step towards exiting receivership. And, and that's right. where I want to get clear. And again, I think we can do a better job of elevating what our goals are and where we're at and let's work. But at that other layer, I feel like that is also really important. So could, just to pick up on that, Ventura, like I, I feel pretty strongly that I, that the last way that you stated that I feel like is dead on, right? It's like, and I, I would say that this plan, because it's one of the official documents sort of relative to our charge as the receivership board and shaping the school systems, you know, strategy and path going forward. We, even if we say nothing else, but like put a kind of flag in the ground that says, it is our assumption that meeting the goals outlined in this turnaround plan is, you know, whether we say it is like, it's the first step or it's an important step you know, toward uh, helping the system exit receivers, you know, and there needs to be further discussion about the, you know, the next steps along that path as well. But we, we need to say something about that. I think it's, it's really important. It's important for a lot of constituents in the community that we do that and for us as a district. Ventura, could you add something um, with the plan to have joint meetings and training of the school committee? I uh, mean, should that oh. be included? Yeah, that's interesting. I, I need to look back at the plan. Where, where would that fit, Melissa? I'm curious can, if you can. I, Pat, for some reason, I you were totally, mm -hmm. you were like mime talking when I couldn't hear a word you said. No, I'm sorry. Um, I know we're, we're planning to have joint meetings with the um, with the school committee and working towards the school committee uh, receiving training. That could be part of the plan as we work towards the exiting of receivership. That could be something that's included in the turnaround plan. Yeah, I, I agree, Pat. And I think what, what those two things are sort of revealing is that our assumption as a board is that our work is to help the district meet the goals in the turnaround plan, because that's what, again, and two, we think our role is to help the school committee be prepared, you know, for like what, what the day, like, those are the two things that feel like are in our control. And I think like, and there may be others, but saying those things clearly, just I agree with somewhere in here uh, as sort of our working assumptions and what we believe to be true. Uh, and Pat, I think putting in some of the high level goals around developing a plan and I have to, yeah, I got you. I know the chat feature, I know, I was trying to- I know, I, I hear you yeah. So used to it now. Um, but yeah, so I think we're in agreement. Um, where, where and how we say that is, I think what we need to still figure out. We, uh, I, I'm hearing that ask, and maybe the next step is for me to go in and kind of make a recommendation on where it fits. That would be great. Yeah, just to be clear, the plan, there's currently no room for uh, that suggestion in the plan because the plan is very specific to the goals of the district as it relates to the academics, as it relates to academics. So perhaps this group, when we do look at it, Melissa and I, um, I, I'm already thinking ahead here, it becomes an addendum and an additional sort of uh, narrative in the plan. But I just want to caution folks that this plan is very specific to the academics rather than the current status of receivership in the plan. So when you read it through, you're like, yes, this is all about the academic piece, not the other uh, discussion that we're having. But I see no issue with us adding a piece to this document that also elevates the conversation.
Yeah, I, I guess, um, and I'm, I'm just trying to pull up like the plan itself. Um, I mean, I think partly what, what, what I'm describing or hearing Pat, like with the school committee piece for me could fit under like engagement. I mean, strategy three is support and engagement, right? I have to get going deeper, but engagement around engaging the school committee, training them and like, you know, we, we don't have to maybe say as explicitly, like if it's related to questions of when receivers will end, at minimum, it feels like that's something that we can commit to, you know, to engaging school committee with training, support, you know, this and that. And then, you know, I agree, like, I'm not sure if, um, I think what I'm asking for is to make explicit an assumption we have as a LAE, which is like, while we don't decide when receivership ends, we assume that meeting the goals in this plan are a part of the calculus that goes into deciding that. And, you know, maybe that's just something we share with the commissioner and, and let him know that's our working assumption and where and how would you have that reflected uh, in the cover letter or in whatever, you know, that's what you say about it. So yeah, I agree. It may not fit, that piece specifically may not fit nicely in the plan, but I think it's just a question we need to elevate. And I know Brianna's on the call as well, uh, which like I think what I'm hearing is the board wants to make its assumptions clear and known, just so that you know. And again, that could be just a cover letter, like here's what we think, you know, and that's it. But but I appreciate you all doing a deeper dive and seeing if there is a place for that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm sorry, Cynthia. I like your idea of the addendum. To the plan. I think that seems to make sense because the plan is focusing on student achievement and then we've reached these goals. We want to add this to it. You know, it, it just kind of flows better, I think, than having it embedded in the plan itself. I know that's, that's yeah, I, I yeah, Pat, I offered that because I don't want it to get missed in the plan. And, you know, if it, it feels important enough that we have an addendum that clearly spells it out, even if we kind of weave it in there later on. Yeah. But I don't want it to be like, you know, mushed in there. Uh, we, we could try to like, we could, but it's not as clear that that is that becomes something that it should be highlighted. I, I agree with the group too. This is so important that it should have its own space. So. <clears throat> so, so with that consensus, um, I'd like to offer that you all accept the current um, comments and edits that the stakeholder group has given us initial and that we make note of your um, um, strong recommendation that we have an addendum with respect to the receivership aspect that is not addressed in this plan and that we bring it forward to the full board for, for discussion. So curious to know what you all think about that idea. Sounds good to me. I like the idea. I agree. What, what would an addendum look like? I don't know. I think we should share that feedback that stakeholders um, elevated to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that you all mm -hmm. decide as board members how to address that in a in a separate document, but attached to the actual plan to then submit forth to the commissioner. I don't know how that no. would take shape. I don't know. I think you mentioned, is it a cover letter? Right, is right, it right. Exhibit A? I don't know. You, okay. you all I think that's what I was uh, suggesting that it go back to the full board and they might have other ideas about this based on your recommendation. Yeah, are, are we, I'm also wondering, maybe this is a question to Brianna, like are we including the feedback we receive from stakeholders just more broadly as part of the plan itself? Like, is that an addendum? Because I guess where I'm heading is if, if that sort of feedback 
forms part of the overall package, like addendum C is community feedback. Maybe we write an explicit one pager, you know, ahead of, uh, I'd like to capture this feedback, like from uh, around receivership specifically, and that's where we can explicitly state what our assumptions are that, you know, meeting mags are part of the, uh, the step towards exit and that our role is with school committee. Like I could see that as being part of that, but I, I guess I don't know, first of all, like do, would we include that kind of feedback in, in, in an addendum? So all of the feedback that you've received from stakeholder engagement has and or will be included in the plan. So the first round of stakeholder engagement was already incorporated. That's something you can certainly state publicly that there was a community engagement process. It's been incorporated into the design of the plan. This is the second round of that community engagement. Um, so all of the recommendations that Melissa and Cynthia are making are also with with this group's green light going to be integrated directly into the plan. So I think the overarching question is now um, this question of receivership, which doesn't have a direct edit into the plan and how we respond to that feedback. Um, so we can certainly go back into the plan um, and take a look and have further discussions. Um, the cover letter that already exists does have a very high level um, overview with a couple of paragraphs that talks about the exit to receivership and that Lawrence has so far not met the, um, the, the goals, partially the measurable annual goals from the previous turnaround plans that would um, you know, move the commissioner down a, a step of potentially exiting the district. So that is in the plan that's a potential area that you can strengthen that language and make it more explicit. But we can continue to have discussions about this particular element of feedback um, and where it might fit. Yeah, see, I, I, I like that cover letter. Um, we'd have to go back and if there's a way to strengthen language there, I would be a proponent of that. And while I know that the feedback has, um, you know, impacted then the updates in the document itself. I think what I was asking is if there's a separate addendum that just like summarizes the feedback received or attaches the report from like GSP, you know, or something like that, um, you know, in, in addition to incorporating feedback into making line item changes, things like that. But um, do you know if that's included typically? It typically is not. Okay. All right, so what I'm hearing is, again, I would propose if there's stronger language that could be made to the introduction, and again, we, we can't make promises, but what we're saying is laying out our assumptions and that the MAGs meeting those are a step or a consideration, like whatever, strengthening language there, and then maybe a, a one pager that we put as an addendum to say, you know, in addition to all the feedback we received about the elements, here is specific feedback we received about receivership and we want to capture that and so it's because it doesn't fit nicely anywhere but at minimum we want to capture that feedback and then maybe we can say a few words at the beginning of that uh, around some of our assumptions again and things like that so that's kind of what i'm hearing is that cynthia when you think addendum does that make sense i think that's right and i like this idea that we would have the one pager that is endorsed and edited by this committee to then bring forth to the larger board for further discussion and approval. Yeah, and I think looking at the, um, so yes, I agree with that. And, and looking at the date, um, I don't know how quickly we can make, you know, basically synthesize the feedback and we can ask GSP to do that. But like, I'd like this committee to take a look at it sooner rather than later. Cause I think based on the discussion today, we have general agreement on like, we really like the changes, Melissa, that you and the team have made responding to feedback. This just feels like one of the last areas where, you know, that and a potential cover letter where we, I'd want this committee to weigh in on because what I want to do is then be able to bring it back to the board ideally for December and say, here's what we're proposing as the full turnaround plan renewal. Um, you know, and, and, you know, we have how many? One, two, three, four board members here already. So it's really just with a few others that, we need to make sure if they have questions and things like that, but I would love to move to actually approve this thing in December and, and move on, <laughs> you know, to actually implement. So should we talk about the process of 
being able to offer that to the board in December? Is this a good time to do that? Melissa, did you have anything else on the updates to the plan or anything like that? No, that's really okay. it. I mean, that really took the all the elements that were suggested we addressed uh, with, awesome. with the yeah. presentation I gave you. Yeah, and in the report that was a little bit more detailed. Um, so yeah, Cynthia, I mean, I think that makes sense then to talk about next steps. Yeah, so I wonder if, so let's just recap here just for my own timeline sake. We've reviewed the stakeholder feedback. You, um, it, it sounded like you all agree with the comments and um, things we incorporated and the outstanding comment that currently is not part of the plan is the question about receivership. We've had discussion about when and how we um, elevate that and continue to keep that conversation alive. And we've come to consensus that it would be best to include it as part of the plan, but not try to like uh, embed it in the plan because it's not, it, it deserves its own, it deserves, this group to think about how and who will summarize that and then that way we are ready to send it to the larger board and have further discussion in December. Yeah, I think that, that resonates with me. I don't know others. Sounds like a good plan. Yes. Okay. The, the one thing that I would recommend, yep. because, and this is something that from time to time, the board has made the observation, we do get killed by documents. <laughs> we get so many documents and it is overwhelming at times. This is a very important step that we all agree that we are getting into. So maybe this could be a standalone document that is sent to the rest of the, I mean, to all of us, yep. and that we will have time to read it and reflect and to be ready for the board because if we do it like even if we do it 48 72 hours before the meeting people might not have might not have the opportunity to read it and reflect on it yeah great feedback. Mm -hmm. sorry great feedback i agree with you what if we agreed that we would send it our next board meeting is december 8th is that the wednesday the uh, second wednesday sorry what's the second wednesday let me look look very quickly here eight. Eight. great so the the eighth is our next board meeting and so given where we are i'm wondering if it's reasonable for us to have a solid draft to you all on the 29th which is about a couple of weeks from now and it and it gets sent to you all to the board with your endorsement so we'll we will draft i'm not sure who's going to do that one and then send to this committee first for approval and very quickly send that to the entire board in preparation for the eighth that will work i think i don't know how i've been to around patty fields but it seems reasonable that, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. Pat, what do you think? I think it's a great idea. And we'll have it in enough time to really go through it and, and make sure it's what we want to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, um, <clears throat> I think that allows us to do now another pass. And when I say we, it's you also, thank you, uh, to do another pass at the edits. Um, and, and I agree that then we could forward it um, you know, and again, the feedback we've heard today has been, you know, mostly positive. So forward it to the board. Hopefully they have time to read it, elevate any questions, things like that. Uh, I guess my hope is that it is in such a good place that as a board, we're comfortable then voting on it and concluding the process. But I guess I would be open to, and that's how I would want to lead into the meeting. Like, please review this questions. We're going to discuss it and ask for your vote. If anything comes out of that discussion from the other three board members that we just hadn't anticipated or feel substantive enough, I will consider then taking all that if we need to make adjustments for the January meeting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but again, my 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 sort of going into this is to to review final and vote 
this is like a conclusion of like a two year process. I mean, we've been looking at this and thinking about it. And I feel like we're now incorporating another round of feedback, which is great because our board asked for that. But but I think we're now ready to, you know, move forward. So that, that'll be my plan. And Tura, do you think it would be appropriate when we get the, the draft to look at on the 29th that you ask that if, if anybody has any questions or anything, they forward them to either Brianna or the superintendent so that questions are answered prior to the meeting? I mean, would that make sense? Because I know we're anxious to get this passed and I'd hate to see it go another month. I know, it's just a thought. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, and just let me know. I mean, I'm happy to collect feedback. I'm also happy if it's Melissa or, you know, superintendent, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think that makes sense. Great. So we will make sure that when we send that, we offer the additional opportunity for questions prior to that meeting and uh, so we can have a robust discussion and in earnest people feel like they've had you know their questions answered and their feedback incorporated sounds good yeah great wonderful so i think with that we have clear next steps you should expect that right after the holiday break, the Thanksgiving break, something will land in your inboxes. Um, please help us by reviewing it as quickly as possible so then we can then send it to the larger board. Sounds good. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Bye. Take care.